Hello there everyone, welcome to another World of Tanks console video with me, Wombo Leader, where we're going to take a look at the Japanese Tier 8 Premium Tank, the STA-2 Sentry from Nomahan. Now, this is a tank that I won in one of the season passes, and it's always had a good reputation, the STA-2, it's always meant to have a good reputation as a tank, which is a tank that I have personally struggled to ever really do very well in. Up until this game here, and we do do pretty well in this game, spoiler alert. But up until this game, I had just never really managed to do anything particularly special in it. And since this game, I have never really managed to do anything particularly special in it. But finally, on this occasion here, we did manage to get a decent game. And I thought we'd pile it into a little video and uh, let you see what went on. So coming up to the ridge line here on Nomahan. I'm probably not saying that correctly, but uh, that is kind of World of Tanks legend doesn't it and you know everybody thinks they know how to say the maps with the names of the maps and you're probably not but yeah, this tank's meant to be all about that gun there and in this occasion here that shot into the charioteer there proving it as we use the gun depression use the accuracy and put around into the british tier 8 uh, tank destroyer and get a little bit of early damage We've got a barask here who has uh, doing very barask light tanky kind of things not a light tank of course barasks are very dangerous we managed to get a shot into the barask on the move now why have i never really managed to do especially well in this tank well the tank is kind of all about that gun you know it's got a so 240 alpha but it's got a good rate of fire it's got decent accuracy as you know the snapshot there across the map proves uh, it's a good aim time uh, good penetration on the standard rounds uh, you know it's got all the attributes of the gun that you would like to have but for me the gun just trolls me relentlessly you know fully aim shots in seem to kind of not really go quite where i'm aiming it bounces things that really shouldn't be bouncing uh, yeah, if you can't make the gun work on this tank, then it's not really got too much else that's going to go for it. Obviously, it's got a good, bit, decent bit of mobility, but uh, yeah, don't rely on the armour to do anything. So really, the, the, what the, the sentry is supposed to do is keep his distance from opponents, work a ridge line, use that rate of fire, and uh, pester the enemy from a distance. And if it doesn't really do that, then you're going to struggle, uh, as an average player anyway, to really make this tank sing. And uh, that generally tends to be the problem that I have whenever I play this tank. It just doesn't really want to perform gun-wise. Uh, and as I said, if it's not performing gun-wise, you are going to struggle to make this tank work. But so far, not too shabby on this one as we are taking pot shots at some of the enemy tanks across the map. Uh, sometimes I call this the Summer Erlenberg yeah, because it kind of can sometimes descend into a similar kind of battle where both teams sit in a ridge line facing each other and uh, snipe off. But definitely not quite as bad. Got a light tank here, it's an AMX 1390. This is a tier 9 game, that is the French tier 9 light tank. We put one into the 1390. That one goes somewhere not into their tank. Maybe the first example of the gun not doing particularly what it should be doing, but that's a nice shot indeed. That is the gun doing what you expect of it. Uh, as we put another one into the French light, take them down to 307 hit points. That's going to be a one shot for most tanks, not for our tank, but uh, yeah, we're looking to get that light tank removed from the game. We're going to come out here, we're going to get another shot into them, 216 damage. Now they're a one shot for everyone, they're on the run. Hopefully somebody can take that light tank out, as they are in a pretty awkward position for our team, but with only 89 hit points, they definitely can't afford to be cheeky anymore. So we are up by two tanks in this battle here. We have sort of advanced a little bit forward into cover. Not quite in the middle of the map, but it's a good place to try and use uh, the fairly decent view range that we've got on this tank to try and spot up some of the tanks on the ridge. Two artilleries on each team as well. There's that AMX 1390 important shot coming up here. Aim this one in, Wombo. That was a bad shot. We never laid that one enough. We're going to get a second bite at the cherry, are we? That's much better aimed in, and that is the light tank taken out. And that is a big, a big play for us to remove that tank. We having lost our light tank a good while ago. So no light tanks left, and it is one tank between ourselves and the red team. Now we've got a heavy tank coming up here on uh, the left flank. Let's take a look and see what that's going to be. Uh, again, 
got to be careful, always think about, you know, cover for your tank. Uh, there is sort of long lines of sight here on this map, and I don't really know what is down on that flank uh, a little bit further off. So if we get spotted up, you can lose your hit points very quickly. Got most of our hit points at the moment. The only damage we've taken was from the AMX 1390, which is now being removed from the game. Now this is down to a 7 versus 7. We've got the object 432 out in the open there. Can we get a shot on them? Aim up. Oh, that's a good shot, actually. It was a lucky one right into the back of the tank. Low roll, though. 213 damage. Uh, but nice to get some damage into that. Very dangerous tier 9 medium tank, to be honest with you. Very stealthy. Uh, punchy little gun. I'm seeing quite a lot of them about at the moment, and they always tend to be quite difficult adversaries indeed. What have we got here? We've got a heavy tank out in the open as well. It's a Patriot. Oh dear, whenever you see these kind of uh, tanks from the air and operations, you often see some very not brilliant play from them, let's just say. And I always, you know, it's basically it's a low tier player, a beginner player who's been gifted a free tank and uh, they do some careless things on the battlefield. But I will never say no to free damage, folks. I have been that very kind of player way back in the early days of my World of Tanks career. Uh, so a couple of shots into the Patriot there takes us up over the 2000 damage mark and we are one tank to the good as well. Now at this point I noticed that one of our medium tanks has gone in uh, to do the glory run up to the opposite ridge. It's an important move and it can quite often be like a kind of game winning move. You know, you need somebody to, uh, to make that breakthrough. So we're going to go in and we are going to support them in case they try and get bum rushed by maybe the enemy team who will also understand that they have now managed to get themselves into a dangerous position. We've also got an AMX uh, 5120 I believe our top tier medium tank coming along as well. Uh, so now that we're onto this uh, ridge line here we've managed to cross the open territory get to the opposite uh, ridge line. This very often can lead to the end of the battle quite quickly. We've also got to be careful because quite often a team will get complacent in this situation and uh, just feed themselves to the enemy team uh, if they kind of have moved back into a defensive position. I've seen that happen a lot as well. But we have one f intention once we got to this point and that was to spot the old artillery. So using that kind of bit of foliage behind the equaliser there to put some shots into them without them spotting us. We've put two in, they now decide to move and as obviously they now Come out from behind that foliage, we put the third one in. And we're gonna put the fourth one in. That one does spot us up, and it could have been the tank destroyer to our right that spotted us. One more shot to finish the RT off, and of course we miss that one, don't we? The RT knows where we are now. They're gonna try and get a salvo into us, are they? They only managed to fire one shot off, and that is the full health of that equalizer for our STA to Sedgy, which felt very nice indeed. We've got the SMV here, we put an auto-aim shot into the side of the SMV for another damaging shot. He's going to turn our attention to us, but I know I've got two teammates coming up behind that Italian tank destroyer, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to feed myself to them. We'll just keep them occupied, we'll keep popping up, they'll keep looking at us. Uh, I can see our teammate coming up behind them as well. Looks like they've spotted the danger from behind, but they're still looking towards us, to be fair, they are going to start turning, are they? Will we get a shot into the side of them? No, nope. we will try and get the kill shot, but the AMX 5120 finishes off them. The other artillery has been spotted, rams our teammate, we get the kill shot into them, and that's the double kill on the artillery, which is always going to put a smile on my face, and it's now four versus one, uh, this one should be a victory, but... Not always guaranteed, because if uh, you were guaranteed a victory at this point, then the old Kolobanov's medal wouldn't exist, would it? Where the Kolobanov's medal, which you can't get in this situation, obviously, but the Kolobanov's medal is when you stand alone against five enemy tanks and win. Probably, probably the most prestigious medal in the game, to be fair. It's the one that everybody wants. There is two ways of getting it. You can obviously do the what you call a proper Kolobanov's, where you do take on five enemy tanks, kill them all and win. But there is a situation where you can be standing alone in an assault uh, where you are defending the assault and you're the only tank left and the enemy team don't manage to catch the base or kill your tank within the time limit and you can get a cheat Kolobanov's medal that way which I think is probably what happens in more situations 
than anything else. So, anyway, we are nowhere near uh, where that uh, tank destroyer is, or I'm not entirely sure. I think I knew where the tank destroyer was at this point. But 3,625 damage, 365 spawn, 3 kills in a tier 9 game as well. Uh, a couple of those kills being artillery. Finally, not having a terrible game in the sense shade. The, 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 the cards fell in place, the gun did its job, and that's sometimes all you need is a little bit of luck, a little bit of RNG, and for the main attribute of your tank to actually work, I guess. You know, if your gun's good, you need the gun to work good. Oh, we do actually maybe get a shot in the charioteer here, do we? Oh, we do. We put one into the top of the turret there. That's going to get us up to 3,800 damage. Are we going to get the kill shot? Oh, we are indeed. We take it up to 3,900. I completely forgot that we managed to take the charioteer out. But yeah, often case in World of the Tanks, if the attribute of your tank is working, then you can possibly have a good game. You know, if your armour works and you're a heavily armoured tank, then things will tend to go better. If you're a sniper and your gun actually works as a sniper, then happy days. But sometimes, and I often find the case with the Senshi, the gun doesn't work for me and I often have very bad or even mediocre or more often than not mediocre games. But yeah, that's been a battle here in the Senshi. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.